just saw a mother walk into a classroom with a handheld radiation meter and proceed to tell the teacher that little Billy needs to sit in the back corner of the classroom because of the toxic school Wi-Fi radiation. What other bad shit things have you seen slash heard of that these helicopter moms do? I work in HR at a large telecommunications company. We usually sit in the conference room and can see hear the interview candidates while they are waiting in the lobby. This poor guy was probably 19 or 20, and his mother wanted to go into the interview with him. We actually had to ask her to wait outside the lobby, because even after being asked to sit down, she said it was her right to be in there. What the duck. Guy didn't end up getting the job, and she later called and asked where she could send an appeal letter. Wish I had saved that letter, it was intense. I made a really great friend in high school. He and I were as thick as thieves. Early on in the friendship, my parents took us to a movie. I don't remember the movie, but the start of it got delayed by technical difficulties by about 20 minutes. My parents called from their cell to let my friend's mother know, but only got the voicemail. Thinking that would suffice, we all proceeded to have a good time. Fast forward to the end of the movie, my mom turns her cell phone on, and discovers her voicemail box is suddenly full, 20 I believe was her limit. All of the, were my friend's mother calling pleading for us to return her son, and she would pay any amount we demanded, and that if we called back soon she wouldn't go to the police. She literally had thought we kidnapped him. Suffice to say, when we got him home, only 20 minutes later than planned, the conversation was rather awkward. My dad figured out exactly how long it took to walk home from school, as in literally walked it himself and then gave me exactly that long to get home every day. If I was more than 5 minutes late, I got a beating for ducking around. Then they got mad that I had no friends, and after a protracted argument and fight I got an extra 15 minutes to make friends after school. That winter, I got in a snowball fight, and was having fun and didn't realize I'd gone a little too long. So dear old dad drove to my school and started wandering around, bellowing my name until he found me. That was a blast. I believe this is the year after he stood in front of my entire class and told them to start being nice to me. I'm so glad I changed schools every year. There was a girl in my 5th grade class whose mother would take an hour out of her day to come supervise recess. Every 5 minutes, she'd blow a whistle and go, Emmy, it's time for your shade break. And, just like clockwork, Emmy would have to go sit in the shade for 5 minutes. This shit got really annoying when we would play team sports. No one wanted Emmy on their team. Saw a kid, must have been 12 or 13, yelling at his mom in public about how he can wipe his own ass and didn't need her help with that anymore. Her response, but you can't see it, how do you know it's really clean? I felt so bad for that kid. I was not allowed to walk to school by myself, even though it was literally one block away from my house because my mom said I would get raped. I was in junior high. I was never allowed to be unattended, and was not allowed to go to friends' houses because my parents did not trust other parents. This extended all the way through high school, until I started acting out, and they sent me to lockdown mental health treatment facility. My childhood was painfully lonely, to say the least. Edit, for all the people who think this is a novelty account due to the username, it's not. I definitely exist, and this definitely happened. You haven't seen anything until you've seen helicopter hockey parents. They don't only hover over their kids, they encourage horrible sportsmanship. A few years ago, when my gully brother was playing squirt AA, so about age 9 to 10, the opposing team equipped themselves with the age old strategy of run the gully. The coaches were in on this. The parents cheered bloodthirstily whenever these little jackasses rammed into my brother, and they kept this up more than they attempted to score. My brother had had enough. Poor kid snapped and walloped the next boy who skidded into his crease, the net area, which was totally justifiable by that point. This redneck looking woman and her husband immediately got up, started screeching about their poor precious Joey, and get that girly out of there, referee. Eventually their whole cheering system was on their feet and yelling out obscene shit about taking my brother out. To 10 year olds. They all got escorted out by security. You cannot make this shit up. I have a cousin who lives in northern Michigan, 
where youth hockey is a very big deal. My cousin was voted president of the league one year, and his first priority was to get the parents to only encourage good sportsmanship and friendly competition. He sent out over a dozen letters before the season even started, to the parents of players throughout the league stating that any parent seen shouting profanity, encouraging violence or cheating, etc., would be permanently banned from all future games. The first round of the season starts, and it was a disaster. Parents were worse than usual, and several people were arrested at different games for fighting in the stands. Needless to say, the letters hadn't worked. So my cousin decides to hold a meeting for players and coaches, only to discuss the problem. After having the police forcibly vacate a few parents who didn't agree with the players and coaches only aspect of the meeting, he asked the players what they wanted to do. Most of the players actually said they didn't want their parents to come to games. Most of them weren't trying to go pro, they just enjoyed playing hockey, and their parents were ruining it for them. So they took a vote at the meeting, and my cousin sent out one last letter that simply said, parents, step parents, foster parents, legal guardians, etc., were no longer allowed at official league games. If a parent was spotted, that team would forfeit the game. If they came a second time, that team forfeit the season. My cousin got some death threats, but nothing ever came of it. I went from 4th to 12th grade being homeschooled. Around the 6th grade area, my mom thought it was a good idea for my sister, also homeschooled, and I to go to some sort of homeschool event in Stone Mountain, GA, very conservative, Christian area. Also where the second KKK was formed, TYL. What the hell, it was a day off of sitting around the house, and there was some cool stuff at Stone Mountain. So we went, and it was probably one of the strangest experiences of my life. All the kids had this sort of glazed over look on their faces, I quickly found out why, most of the kids I talked to were on some sort of ADHD medication. That was the saddest part looking back on it, while the few lucky unmedicated ones of us were off at the playground. Most of these kids just sat around looking at the ground with their mothers immediately beside them. But anyway, back on track with the story. I eventually found another kid who played soccer, and he seemed pretty normal, or so I thought, so we spent some time kicking the ball around. Both of us seemed pretty content on wasting time until it was time to go. Then, his mother came along. Cooper. Milkies. His face went bright red, and I was completely perplexed. What the duck are milkies? His mother promptly strolled up in the exact same ducking outfit as the kid, glared at me, and then produced a bottle, as in a ducking formula bottle, from her ass, I shit you not, she reached inside the back of her pants and pulled out this bottle. She then proceeded to say, nice warm milkies for my little boy. At which point I promptly turned around, found my mom and sister, and straight up told them, if we weren't leaving I would just wait by the car. Apparently, they had seen some weird shit too, and agreed to leave. We then went to Popeyes and ate chicken while telling stories of these strange, strange people. I was terrified. TLER, mom of an 11-12 year old kid, wearing the same exact outfit as him, pulled a bottle of warm milk from her ass, and told him it was time for milkies. When I was in high school. I would go teach French to elementary school children with a few friends of mine. I used to do magic tricks for the kids because they would go absolutely apeshit, and they all loved it. One day, I was teaching them, and I told them I had a special trick. I did the Balducci levitation, magic spoilers, for them and they went ballistic. Afterwards, the teacher pulls me aside and sternly tells me that I'm lucky she didn't throw me out of the classroom, because one of the students who happened to be absent that day, is, and I quote, anti-Wiccan, and isn't allowed to view black magic. Alrighty, I have a few. I worked at Whole Foods, and that is ground zero for lunatic parents. There was the nutritionist and her mom that didn't want anything scanned because of the radiation. One lady was going on and on about how her son was corn free, egg free, dairy free, and soy free, because that's what her chiropractor told her to do. I wanted to apologize to that kid so bad. When I worked at a cooking store, like William Sonoma, I had a lady come in with her teenage kids trying to find glass baking dishes, 
because metal is bad for you. I suggested silicone, and she said that was worse, so I suggested parchment paper, but she already used that. I had a hard time holding back the massive smile when I told her that parchment has silicone in it. Every time she would go off on something, her kids would just roll their eyes. Edit, I'm a dumbass with formatting, and silicone has an E on the end. Didn't see it personally. But a few years ago there was an article in my local newspaper about a mother cleaning the vegetables she was cooking for her family in bleach. Didn't realize she was doing anything wrong until one of her children nearly died. While we're on the subject of imbecile adults not knowing that bleach is poison, I have a story. My parents moved into a new neighborhood, and there was a pretty rich family that lived in the house behind them. The mom was a housewife who seemed a bit mentally unstable, probably a pill popper. One morning the housewife rang my parents doorbell and chewed them out because she says she saw their cat pooping in her flower bed, and it killed all her flowers. My dad pointed out that cat poop probably wouldn't do that, so she replied that she knows for a fact that cat poop kills plants, and so she had to pour bleach in her flower bed to disinfect everything. Had a helicopter mom who became one of the middle school's lunch monitors, in order to help her kid make more friends. She would carry around candy, and would only give it out to people that were friends of her child. Literally denying others if she didn't know them. The family I work for are helicopter parents. The mom turns off all the electricity at night, so they do not get radiation while they're sleeping. I'm wondering why the electricity isn't off during the day. I mean, they are exposed to radiation just as much, right? Certain toys and candy are banned because they have dined them. The mom still breastfeeds her 5 year old son. He, note, he, whips them out all the time, in public, in front of strangers, etc. He calls them milkies. And he knows that it's not appropriate and is extremely creepy about it. I have so many stories from this family, it's ridiculous. I went to a school where helicopter moms were completely normal. So many stories, but here's a more extreme one. When I was 7, I met my friend Sarah. Despite meeting my parents multiple times, Sarah's mother showed up the day before Sarah was supposed to come over to interview and inspect my parents and their home, to make sure it was safe for Sarah to come over. And gave my parents instructions on how to make our house safe for Sarah. She'd also just randomly show up for some play dates and stay the entire time, watching us play in my house. Her mother came to school one day, and pulled me out of class to tell me to stop giving Sarah money for the milk vending machine, because the hormones in milk will kill her, and do you want to do that to Sarah? We had school from 8.30 to 3.30, and then after school stuff until 5.30, and Sarah would only have lunch and one snack, usually fruit. They also managed her meals, by making them up and laying them out in the fridge, breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner. Cupboards were not to be touched, ever. When we were in high school, age 14 to 17, Sarah wasn't allowed to leave school property for any reason. We used to go out for lunch and had to leave her behind, no cafe in the school. Despite only living about two blocks from the school in a really nice area, she'd have to wait until her mother got off work to pick her up, sometimes not until 6pm. She couldn't go anywhere by herself, even at 16, 17. If we went to the mall, her mother would follow us around, saying, just pretend I'm your girlfriend. Same with movies. On the rare nights Sarah was allowed to sleep over, her mother would personally visit around 10-11pm to check on her. Her mother also had access to all her passwords, from MSN to Hotmail, to some sort of dual phone, where her mother would also receive Sarah's incoming cell phone calls. When you phoned Sarah, her mother would listen on the other line. They also found any and all reasons to ground her, so she wasn't allowed to leave the house. Like, she was supposed to clean the kitchen every day, from age 10, from washing dishes after their meals to mopping the floor. Once she accidentally left a fork in the washing machine, and was grounded for two weeks. Sarah ended up drinking heavily during high school, went to university six hours away, and has yet to come back. I wish her all the best.